there are 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Maybe the origin of life or intelligence is exceedingly improbable. Or maybe civilizations arise all the time, but wipe themselves out as soon as they are able. Or here and there, orbiting other suns, maybe there are worlds something like our own, on which other beings gaze up and wonder as we do about who else lives in the dark. After billions of years of biological evolution on their planet and ours, an alien civilization cannot be in technological lockstep with us. If alien civilizations are behind us, they're likely to be too far behind to have radio. And if they're ahead of us, they're likely to be far ahead of us. They might use other very advanced means to communicate with their peers, but they would know about radio. We are now on an unprecedented scale, listening for radio signals from possible other civilizations in the depths of space. The Meta Radio Telescope at Harvard, Massachusetts is 26 meters in diameter. Every day, as the Earth rotates the telescope beneath the sky, a swath of stars narrower than the full moon is swept out and examined. Over a year, all of the northern sky is observed. Each channel is very narrow. All of them together constitute only a few parts in a hundred thousand of the available radio spectrum. It's as if someone told you that there's only one station on your home radio set's frequency band, but your set's frequency dial with its thin marker that you adjust by turning a knob, happens to reach from the Earth to the Moon. Hydrogen is by far the most abundant kind of atom in the universe. When it acquires energy, it releases some of it at a precise frequency. Radio astronomers anywhere in the galaxy will be studying the universe at 1420 megahertz and can anticipate that other radio astronomers, no matter how different they might look, will do the same. Over five years, we made some 60 trillion observations. We can't report that we found a signal from alien beings. But we did find something puzzling, something that for me, in quiet moments, raises goosebumps. The strongest candidate signals are 11 events. They satisfy all but one of our criteria for a genuine alien signal verifiability. We've never been able to find any of them again. But just possibly, this is the effect of twinkling, owing to clouds of electrically charged gas in the great near vacuum between the stars. Occasionally, the signal will by chance be temporarily focused and brought within the detectability range of our radio telescopes. Despite the fact that none of these signals repeats, there is an additional fact about them that sends a chill down my spine. Eight of the 11 best candidate signals lie in or near the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. The five strongest are in the constellations Cassiopeia, Monoceros, Hydra, and two in Sagittarius, in the approximate direction of the center of the galaxy. The probability that this correlation with the galactic plane is due merely to chance is less than half a percent. Let's imagine that all our surviving events are in fact due to radio beacons of other civilizations. Then we can estimate how many such transmitters there are in the entire Milky Way. The answer is something approaching a million. If randomly strewn through space, the nearest of them would be a few hundred light years away. Too far for them to have picked up our own TV or radar signals yet. The galaxy would be pulsing with life and intelligence, but they'd be wholly oblivious of what's been happening down here lately. But if, on the other hand, none of our candidate signals is an authentic alien radio beacon, then very few civilizations are broadcasting, at least at our magic frequencies, and strongly enough for us to hear. Now consider a very advanced civilization broadcasting at a power level 10 trillion times the entire energy output of a star like the Sun. Then 
we can conclude not only that there are no such civilizations in the Milky Way, but none out to 70 million light years. None in M31, the nearest galaxy like our own, or the Fornax system, or the Whirlpool Nebula, or Centaurus A, or the Virgo cluster of galaxies, or the nearest Seifert galaxies. Of course, it might be a token not of intelligence, but of stupidity to pour so much energy into interstellar and intergalactic communication. Perhaps they have good reasons not to hail all comers, or perhaps they don't care about civilizations as backward as we are. We have set an instructive limit, but whether on the abundance of very advanced civilizations or their communication strategy, we have no way of knowing. A broad middle range remains open.